So I just got this uh, saw stop sliding table from a friend of mine. And I love it. I've always wanted a sliding table. I used one 35 years ago in Aspen when we were doing fine woodworking there. That was a Martin panel saw. I was German and had a 10 foot slider. Oh, it's gorgeous. But I've been wanting one ever since. When this came up from a friend of mine, I couldn't pass it up. Now here's the rub. Is it's got this supposedly gorgeous, gorgeous miter gauge. But the little bar it has is very short. It's very sloppy in the slot. There's no way it's ever going to end up at 90 or 45. Or, it's just not going to do it. Particularly 90, which is where you have to work almost all the time. So let me show you the fix I made to make this perfecto. So the first thing I did was I made this auxiliary clamp. This one fits in the T-slot, clamps very nicely, but I needed a secondary clamp so I could ignore this stupid thing. So the way I made this, I'll show you here, it's really cool. So it is made to just slide into the slot, the T-slot. It doesn't need to have a real T-shape. It's just the right width for the base of the slot there. Then it has a jack screw on the back, essentially, which is fixed in position. Now this I had to grind down because the top of the slot's kind of narrow, so a regular nut wouldn't fit. Then I used a, uh, a pin over here and what that does is it stops the depth. So as you slide it in, it stops at that depth, not crashing into the spring. The reason I have this little spring is so that when you loosen this, it opens and closes and stays tension to the top. So it's open um, nicely when you go to open it. It doesn't uh, run into the fence, which I then can clamp it down onto that easily. You see it hits here. It's pulling down here, and so it pinches here because it's hitting here and here. Beautiful. And by adjusting this guy, I can make sure I'm hitting flat on the surface and not dinking it one way or the other and ruining the edge of it. So that's the first thing I did was make that. The second thing I did is I made up a special little fixture here. This guy, just a block of half inch aluminum. It happened to have uh, for mica on the back, doesn't need to. And I drilled and reamed and put in a quarter inch drill bushing. Now drill bushing is hardened steel, which is exactly like a mundo, a quarter inch. Well, it's probably about a half tenth, uh, ten thousandths, no, five ten thousandths over a quarter, so that reamers and drill bits and stuff have a little bit of clearance. And then uh, I just uh, made sure it was flush to the backside. So then what I did is I got this fence absolutely square. And I'll show you how I did that in just a minute. And then I just put this guy over here, clamped it, drilled undersize about, uh, so I think I did a 30 second undersize. And then I ran my reamer through and this can be done with a hand drill because the drill bushing keeps you square to the surface. That is, if it's been installed in this square, which I did with my drill press. So it's nice and square, butt it against here, drill and ream that guy. Then I do the same thing over here. Now here I had to put a secondary clamp on out here and all sorts of weird stuff to get rid of this guy out of the way, just to make sure I could get it where I wanted it. So those two holes, are exactly square to the travel. Exactly square. Now the way I made those, well actually let me finish here. So now I can take these guys, oh, I kind of over tightened that. I can break them loose so the fence is all loose. And now by using these two quarter inch dowel pins, these are uh, specialist machinist little dowel pins, they are um, extraordinarily accurate to a quarter of an inch. I mean, they're like within plus minus uh, 
less than a half, a couple thousand, a couple ten thousandths, if I remember rightly. Anyway, they're super accurate. What I did was I sparked a little beep on the side with my MIG welder and then undercut it so it has a reasonably square surface so that when I put it in the table, it doesn't get jammed in by accident. So that goes right into that slot. I mean, that hole, I mean, this goes into this hole. And that little blip is this way on both of them. And then I can just pull this back against them. Keep it tight while I tighten these guys. Voila! It is absolutely square. And these guys come out easily. Just like that. So they don't come loose by accident in the middle of a cut. Ah! That'd be exciting. So now that is square to the travel of the table. Now I'd also, when I set this up, first thing I did is I made sure that the face of the arbor, that is the flange on the arbor, was running absolutely true. I put my indicator on there. Well, that humdinger was out by two thousandths of an inch. So being a little bit of the maniac I am, I opened up the saw and took my well, I can show you here. I use this guy. I use this guy. Tucked it in here and I ground back and forth on that little flange face. And then after I ground it a touch, I took this, which is a machinist parallel used for uh, milling machines. It's really nicely flat and ground. And this one happens to be a sterret, I believe. Anyway, and I'd put some uh, sticky 180 grit paper, wrapped it on there, you can see it was a disc. And then on that flange, I would hold it while it was spinning against the uh, touching on the arbor a little bit and then hit that face of the flange. And if in that, because when I'm grinding with that guy over there, of course I'm gonna end up with a on that flange face, this then would take off those high spots and kind of even it out. And I did that, it probably took me 20 times, being a little bit of time, a little bit of time, a little bit of time, until my indicator ran within a couple ten thousandths, maybe half, a, maybe five ten thousand. It was really straight. So now my blade has no wobble to it when I put it in. It's just smooth and straight. So I did that first. Then, I'm gonna get another piece of metal over here out of my drawer. I use this guy, and this is just a piece of uh, half by inch and a half, and I drilled a 5 8 hole in it. Um, I bolted this onto the arbor, so it was pinched between the flange that I just ground and the, uh, the clamping flange with the nut. And then I would rotate it front and back, and with my dial indicator, with the base pinned against this with the pins dropped so I could slide here front and back. I got it to within about a thou of absolutely square to that travel of the blade. Next thing I did was I set my indicator up on here, slid it back and forth indicating on the slot. Because the slot I just indicated to the plane of the blade. So I could indicate this off that slot using this as my base position fiduciary, great word, fiduciary. That became my zero point for the travel of that against the plane of the blade. So now I know this guy is traveling directly in line with the plane of the blade. Now the way to get this square, before I drilled these fancy little pinholes, I just cramped it down, I clamped it down, the English always say cramp, so I say it sometimes too. But I cramped it down, and then check this out. So first I did a cut on some edge, right, whatever the cut is. Okay, so now I have a very straight edge. I take that straight edge, put it against the fence, and I cut this guy. Okay, so if that's exactly square, well, that's square. But the way to check square, it's kind of a nuisance if all you have 
is a steric adjustable square. Well, it is a steric, so it's really square. But it's hard to tell because it kind of wiggles and piggles and it's just it's a short distance, all that kind of thing. So here's the way to absolutely verify square. This is so cool. I just keep up with this. And I'm sure other people have. I just happen to this time around. So I've got this straight edge. I cut this guy off. Okay. And I'll claim that square. If I turn it like this and cut. Now look at this. If this angle I just cut is way big, this edge up here is going to be that way, right? Because it'll be too old, be over 90. Then when I turn it and do a second cut, well, it'll be the same from a straight edge to this one. This will be plus and this will be out. So the amount out will be this one once, and this one will be the same one equal well, one plus one equals two. So that'll be twice as far out. Now, what, how do I measure that? I measure this distance with my calipers, and I measure this distance with my calipers. If they're the same distance exactly, it tells me this is 90, this is 90, because if that's over, this is over, it's going to be like that. It'll be bigger at the back than the front. If this is under, that's under, it'll be ticked in. So if they're the same number front and back, so I got this guy dialed in, and then I drove these pins, I moved the fence, I put them back against the pins, check this out. Oh, that's hard on the aluminum table. If I do this, I'm at... You can see this, 14,100. Okay, now I check the back. Open it up a ways to make sure there's no magic going on. Check the back, set it against there, lift it up carefully. Bring it up to the camera and check it out. 14,100, oh baby. So this guy is Square, absolutely. Now what's super cool is I can take this guy and I can slide this back over here, put these guys in again. Same thing with the little square edge down, but this time the blip is that direction, so it's away from the fence. Same thing, the little cut is down, blip away from the fence. Right now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have when I pulled this all the way back, 48 inches from the front of my slot to the table at least, so I could end cut a 48 inch panel. So what I did, I used these guys, one, two, three blocks. You know, I got a sneeze. Woo! So then I just push it up, push the fence against. The one, two, three block. Oh, these guys, machinist toy. One, two, three inches within uh, half a thou or something like that, depending on the grade you buy. These are pretty junkers, so it's probably within a thou, which is quite acceptable for this. So I push it up against there, cramp it in place, pull these guys out, pull these guys out. And it is now absolutely square because I'm using the same indexing pins on the front as well as the back. Now I'm assuming, obviously, that this is extraordinarily parallel on both surfaces. That's my assumption. It seems to be, I've done some test cuts and it's dialed. So now I'm able to drop this fence in and have it be exactly 90 to the travel every time. I love it. Now the next thing to do obviously is to do another pin hole up here and get it to be exactly 45. Now the way to measure that is I think to set a stop block, cut it once, 
Put it twice against the stop block so it's absolutely square on the third time and make sure absolutely square and then do my cut so it goes corner to corner because I use my initial square that I have established as absolutely square cut myself an absolute square not a rectangle but a square and then make sure that I'm cutting from tip to tip dead on then I can put a pin up here the same as this one and I'll be able to rotate the fence and have it spot on 45. I love it. Anyway, that's uh, my uh, method of uh, fixing and improving the uh, saw stop sliding table. Oh, the other thing I did is it comes with these funky little legs that go to the floor, which of course are winky. So I welded up the full framework, which is bolted to the saw to make sure it uh, doesn't jump around over time. Anyway, that's how I fixed the sliding table on the saw stop miter gauge. It's gorgeous.